Hi guys, this is jsadon.com and I'm here with a review of the narrowest phone I've tested recently, the Sony Xperia 5 Mark IV. People are still comparing it to a remote control for a TV set because it's so, so narrow. Now, it's also supposed to be sort of a smaller version of the Xperia 1 Mark IV and it's the full flagship that Sony proposes for this year. It has a total of 4 12 megapixels camera, there is one at the front and three at the back side with Zeiss technology. We also have a Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 processor inside, an OLED 6.1 inch screen and a surprisingly large battery. No charger and no cable in the box, saving uh, the planet apparently. $940 is the price tag of this full flagship, so let's get things going. Okay, so design-wise, you know what you're getting into, it's already the 4th generation that Sony is proposing after a few years, so there you have it. It's narrow, it's long, and Sony definitely doesn't adhere to the idea of cutting a hole in the screen, is placing the camera at the top bezel, which makes the top bezel thick, the bottom one as well, but at least there's symmetry. Now the phone measures 8.2mm in thickness and weighs 172 grams. It's got all the bells and whistles, IP, excuse me, IP65, IP60 certification. It can take some dust and water. We got Gorilla Glass Victus at the back side. It's a matte black back and it doesn't draw many fingerprints. Gorilla Glass Victus at the front as well and a sturdy aluminum frame with the antenna cutouts akin to the iPhone ones. Except from the black version, we also have a green version and also a white version. Making it uh, comfy is this uh, long and narrow format which makes the one hand usage zero problem here. It's definitely comfy to use the single hand on account of being so narrow. And actually being so long it's comfy to watch videos on and even do some gaming. By the way it's 1mm shorter and 1mm narrower than the Xperia 5 Mark III. The buttons are quite comfy here on this side except for maybe the small one for the camera which is I would say too small for its own good. Now when we're referring to the screen, it's a 6.1 inch OLED with a resolution that's 2520 over 1080 pixels. We have 120Hz refresh rate, HDR support, BT2020 and uh, I would say big bezels, 21 to 9 aspect, atypical I know and also 10 bit colors. The actual experience uh, can be checked out via this video here. So let's see it in action. Okay, so here we go, we got uh, some pretty vivid colors here to enjoy, excellent brightness, it's a solid all-rounder, so this panel is able to satisfy all the watchers and viewers of Netflix, of gaming, of whatever, with its wide view angles, with its perfect colors, a wide color range, and also excellent contrast even in the strong sunlight which still shines in October. Now, aside from that, uh, the color calibration actually can be tweaked with a huge, a large, a vast amount of settings. Okay, so uh, aside from that, we have a pentile matrix pixel arrangement. When we go here to our sister side measurements, we achieved a very impressive, amazing even result of 805 lux units in our brightness test. It's superior to at least 400 other phones, it beats Huawei P50 Pro, it beats the Xiaomi 12T Pro and the Xiaomi 12 and the Galaxy S22 series, well, almost, because that's actually superior to it. Anyway, it's placed on the fourth spot here and you can see just three phones above it, basically the Galaxy S22 Ultra, S22 Plus and Oppo Find X2. I would also place the iPhone 14 Pro above it when put in the sunlight. I mentioned before that there is a huge amount of settings here that wasn't joking, so uh, if you go ahead and uh, look the settings up for the screen department, you're in for a treat. Display, you got your image quality settings, you got your creator mode, you got real-time HDR drive, you got your standard mode, and by the way the creator mode comes with its own set of sub-settings. We also have auto creator mode and video image enhancement for clearer, sharper and more natural effects. Aside from that, we have this voice balance setting, which we can set manually here once again with a lot of customizations, which you can apply. A refresh rate can be set to high or the basic 60 Hz. And also brightness, adaptive brightness, phone size, display size, dynamic color, sleep, auto rotate, side sense, one handed mode. And if you search well enough, you should find an always on display mode. This is just the tip of the iceberg. There are many other features which uh, you'll discover here once you get searching through the interface. 
Now having said that about the screen which is a quality one, let's go inside the phone and discuss it the CPU. This familiar face is the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. I was expecting the 8 Plus Gen 1 but I can live with this one. It's produced by Samsung based on a 4 nanometer process. It's an octa-core chip also present on the Sony Xperia 1 Mark IV. Uh, it's got the Adreno 730 GPU and the current version we have here comes with 8 gigs of RAM even though it says 7 and 120 gigabytes of storage UFS 3.x. I would say there's no lag here and heat only appears in intense games after about 20 minutes of uh, properly running Diablo Immortal or Genshin Impact. You may experience some throttling if you really use the phone at its top level and as usual for the Sony Xperia device if there are 30 degrees Celsius plus outdoors and you're taking a lot of 4K videos, you receive a warning that your device is overheating. Now when it comes to the benchmarks, we did those and uh, you can go here and find more about them. So in on 229, we're placed on a decent 15 spot here, we're just above the iPhone 14 Pro and Galaxy S22 Plus as well as the OnePlus Plus 10 Pro. We're below the Motorola H30 Pro and the Xiaomi 12. Now in Geekbench 5 in the multi-core test you can see this score here is not exactly impressive. We're just above the Asus Zenfone 7 Pro and Xperia 5 Mark II. Uh, it's definitely not impressive because we're placed below the Honor Magic 4 Pro, Galaxy S21 Plus and the OnePlus 9e one. So there you have it. At least uh, when it comes to the 3D Mark maybe it uh, fares better. Well actually not. Still not very impressive in this test either. In the 3D Mark Slingshot Extreme ES 3.1, we managed to beat OnePlus Nord 2T and Huawei P40 Pro, which are not exactly new phones. We scored below Galaxy S20 Plus and the Xiaomi Mi 11. This is not much of a powerhouse if you look strictly at the benchmarks. But every now and then, there is a bit of a surprise in the off benchmark here. It's still a high performing phone, but we beware of the throttling in intense activities. When it comes to the temperature tests, in benchmarks we achieved 42.2 degrees Celsius and in games 39.6 but it may go higher as you play longer and more intense games. Now as far as the battery is concerned, you can see here that we're in for a treat 5000mAh. For such a small phone I didn't see this coming, so finally something nice, 5000mAh but there's no charger in the box, there's no cable and uh, well Let's see how it fared. I should also mention we have QI wireless charging and on paper we're promised to reach 50% battery after a 30 minute charge. When it come to our, comes to our tests, in video playback we achieved 18 hours and 3 minutes, which is quite good. It's above the Sony Xperia 5 Mark II, the last one we tested from this series, above the Vivo X80 Pro and just 1 minute below Asus Zenfone 9, another compact phone. It's also below the Motorola H30 Ultra and the OnePlus 10T. The more impressive result, actually shockingly good, is in PC Mark continuous usage. Here we are, treated to 17 hours and 48 minutes, 6th spot all time, and above it are only battery phones. I would say we're beating all the flagships from this year, the major ones, Galaxy S22 Ultra, Zen 4.9, uh, Xiaomi 12 series, uh, it's also the equal of the OnePlus 8, they share the 5th spot actually. I mean, uh, they're also below, as I said before, they're just, it's just below uh, other battery phones and other less heavy hitters. Having said that, the charger is quite long, 1 hour and 38 minutes. We've used a spare charger around the house, to be honest, not very compatible, it was a 120 watt beast. Now, uh, Sony is also taking care of us in the long run with uh, some special battery features. Got your stamina mode here, which refers more to power saving, but you also have other features which are, I would say, more important. Battery care, which is this one here, learns your charging habits, you can set it to custom, or you can set it to always function at a certain level. The idea is to reduce the usage and stop the battery charge at a certain level. And battery share is all about that power sharing via QI wireless. Now that we're done with the battery, let's talk about acoustics. As usual, Sony is offering us a stereo experience and no, I'm looking at here for nothing. We have the slit here and the slit here to ready the sound towards our face. And check it out, we even have an audio jack. And once again, as usual, Xiaomi, excuse me, Sony is bombarding us with a lot of options. Acoustic settings. Starting with Dolby Sound, with its own series of options here. And custom ones even manual adjustments in a separate app, separate for phone, separate for headset, reduce reverb, warm, bright, graphic equalizer, movie, music, dynamic, whatever you got 
tons of options here. And some 360 reality audio options, 360 up mix, the idea is to enjoy an experience which simulates a sort of surround. Now we also have some measurements for this acoustic experience, which once again was satisfying for me, enough bass, enough stereo, enough of everything. And uh, here we are with a pretty modest value achieved in an acoustic sample test, 78.3 decibels at the top and 76.5 decibels at the bottom. Usually the bottom one is more powerful and it's also bigger here, so I expected a bit more. Now with these values, we may have surpassed phones like the... Honor Magic 4 Pro and the iPhone 14 Pro, but we stay below the Xperia 5 Mark II and the Zenfone 9. Things aren't also looking very good in the gaming test, just 89 decibels, it's almost at the bottom of all the phones we've measured, only beating older phones like the Galaxy S9 Plus. It's below 300 other phones, including the Zenfone 9, which is about 8 decibels higher, and the Xperia 5 Mark II, which is, uh, I would say, uh, a few decibels higher, like 3 or 4. And by the way, if you're a music maker, you have any pre-installed Music Pro app, you can actually record samples of yourself, a voice, uh, also guitar, what have you, and uh, start producing them on the device here with a few basic options, including this metronome here. So quite nice for the aspiring, I don't know, trapper, trap music or whatever. Okay, so... When it comes to the cameras, uh, Sony finally listened to the people and they put here a 12 megapixel camera instead of an 8 megapixel one. However, it's just fixed focus, sadly. It's 4K video capable, that's nice, the Sony IMX sensor. And uh, at the back side we find the goodies, three cameras, LED flash and a color sensor. These are three 12 megapixel cameras and we have the Zeiss optics, the Zeiss T star coating. The Zeiss T-Star coating is basically a film applied on top of the lenses to combat all the ghosting, refractions and strange effects. So, main camera, 12 megapixel uh, optical stabilization, dual pixel face detection autofocus. We have the 12 megapixel telephoto camera afterwards with 2.5x optical zoom. Once again, optical stabilization and dual pixel face detection autofocus. And finally, the uh, 12 megapixel ultra wide camera with uh, dual pixel face detection autofocus. This baby shoots 4K video at 120 frames per second. And once again, we have the LED flash, we have eye tracking, we have four, excuse me, five axis stabilization. As far as I know, with uh, gy gyroscope assistant uh, for the front camera as well, which is quite nice to see. Um, so basically a lot of things happening here, which are also put in motion by a few apps. There's the Camera Pro app, there's the Video Pro app, and there's the Cinema Pro app. There are many things to play with. So this is the basic version. This is what the average user is going to employ. We have this little cat here as an example. This is the basic interface, and it already detected its face as a document. It's true. But if you want more, well, at least you find here the bokeh effect. You also have some options for continuous shooting and some for white balance and exposure. That's about it, if you want basic. If you want more than basic, you have the auto mode with some extra tweaks. We have the program auto, where it lets you tweak even more ISO, white balance, focus, metering, HDR. Shutter speed priority here, where you can play with the shutter speed and even more options are available. Manual exposure and memory recall. This is where things get a bit more complicated. Uh, okay, so uh, if you stick to auto and basic, you should be fine if you're a beginner. And this is the, well, this is the menu for the basic mode. But if you're opting for a more complex mode, like the program auto, you have some things to tweak from here. Exposure, color, focus, setup, and just, just the tip of the iceberg because there's a lot to play with. The problem here is that the viewfinder becomes very small when you have these options available here, which may be a bit of a drawback. And there's a tendency to shoot video, excuse me, photos in 9 megapixels if you're using the 16 to 9 aspect. Okay, now the other apps, uh, you may know them. We got the Video Pro here, which is uh, the one for shooting videos. And you can choose lenses, you can choose focus. There's a menu here. The thing I love the most, to be honest, is the fact that you can do some streaming from here. You can get this code, input it into your OBS and do live streaming via this phone. Connect to your YouTube account, which is pretty nice for me. We sometimes do live streams. And then we have the famous Cinema Pro, powered by Cine Alta technology. This is where you get your 4K 120 FPS shooting, which you just saw before. There are also a bunch of filters, they call them looks. I think there are more than before, to be honest. 
Uh, last time I checked there were only four, now there's more, you can choose the lens, ISO, FPS, shutter, daylight, focus and so much more, but these are professional tools I would say, the average user will probably skip them. Okay folks, it's time to get into a gallery and check out some photos and videos. As usual, uh, for the past years, Sony is using Google Photos and we have quite a few shots here. I'm going to highlight these pics of flowers because when it comes to macros and close-up, this handset is actually doing quite fine. So it will be satisfying to take close-up shots using the handset. And this is uh, just one or two examples because we actually went ahead and went to a greenhouse or sort of a botanical garden and we have a richness of textures, colors and details here as you can see for yourself. It's a pretty satisfying experience so the phone is reliable and one thing I noticed throughout the capture the many photos we've taken here, and let's go outdoors now, is the fact that it keeps the colors in a bit more realistic manner. It doesn't overblow them like the Oppos, the Xiaomi's, the Huawei's do. Uh, it went with the approach of the Samsung's and the iPhone's. Things are kept in a more realistic way right now. The sky may look a bit off every once in a while, but I love the fact that the regular photos and the ultra white photos have similar colors, and the ultra white photos don't have any corrections or distortions on the side. Now, when it comes to the zoom, uh, we actually tested that. Let me find a proper example here. This cap should do it. So, this is the farther distance, this is the 3x zoom, and this is the 5x where the noise starts. I would say that up to 3x or so, you should be happy with the result, but I've seen better nowadays. Okay, so these are the regular shots. I'm happy with the realistic colors, and if you're into that, if you want overblown, you can buy an Honor Magic 4 Pro. Here we also have some selfies that my colleague took. I mean, they're fine as far as Sony goes. They're not memorable for sure. They don't set any records or anything like that. The problem is that we're coming from an 8 megapixel camera on previous Sony's and to see this 12 megapixel camera working decently is actually quite a step up. And we should have even more selfies here. Once again, there are no records being broken here and these shots are by no means memorable, but they're still good enough to post on social media. The memorable selfies can be taken with an iPhone or a Samsung these days. Samsung's 10 megapixel camera is still a landmark, has been from the Galaxy S10 onwards. So, in the sun or in the shade, you can expect excellent dynamic range, color calibration, focus, richness of details. The zoom is a bit hit and miss and the sky may look odd every once in a while, but these are by no means deal breakers. These are some indoor shots where there's a little bit more noise than I expected, but still, the colors are pretty well kept in check. Where the colors fail, the only failure was towards the end with these uh, yellowish green trees which are overexposed but only on the ultra wide camera. Those have been daytime shots, let's talk about low light. Okay, so here we are with the nighttime shots, so let's check them out. First things first, I have to say that the brightness isn't as impressive as I expected but we also are lacking a dedicated night mode here. These shots, while some of them are decent looking, all of them have the same problem in common, the street lights are a bit too big for my taste. And while the zoom may look even better than the daytime, such shots can be achieved with the high mid-range phones on the market easily, I would say. I mean, there's nothing memorable about them and there's one aspect here, we usually use this pharmacy as a landmark throughout our shots and we can usually tell between the LEDs of the logo. Well, this time we can't, so when it comes to the nighttime shots, I'm not as impressed as I was with the daytime ones. And the ultra wide captures have light which are too big and some aberrations here and there. So there you have it, we're done with the photos, let's talk about the videos, we have an app for that and we have quite, quite a few clips. Okay, so no less than 38 videos. Okay, so let's see what we got. Uh, what I noticed first is the focus test, which is passed with flying colors. As you can see for yourself, the alternation of focus between the foreground and the background is very snappy and happens very fast. Okay, and then we have a stabilization test, one of the many actually, walking around. The color of the sky is a bit odd, it uh, deviates from the normal one, the one that the eye perceives. It's a bit too intense. Okay, so we had the stabilization test, one of them. This is another one, we're walking here. One of the best stabilizations on the market, but I don't need to tell you that. Sony has been delivering on that account for quite a few years now. 
By the way, pretty nice colors, although the saturation and exposure are a bit higher than I would like, and even higher than the uh, photos. Let's maybe find some colors, but before that, we can actually see a selfie video, which is honestly not bad, but also I don't think it's worth a vlogging career, so once again, a bit of a high mid-range behavior here. Okay. And let's maybe try to find something more colorful. I actually love the texture here. Nice texture and details, which we captured when it comes to this clip. You could have even created a rainbow, but it didn't happen. And we have several more clips. Actually, a lot of them, including some more colorful ones. I have to be honest, my favorite video is the very last one in the gallery, where we have a flying insect was trying to find a proper flower to, well, eat. I think it's this one here. Or maybe, ah, oh, no, it's this one. Okay, so a lot of colors here, a lot of details. There is a lot happening and the camera is able to focus on everything and deliver a crisp experience. And actually you can see this insect in action going from flower to flower. It's actually an odd little fellow. He's like a bigger bumblebee mixed with a moth. Anyway, quite impressive in filming, except for the odd parts where there was oversaturation, overexposure. And if you really mess around with the settings, you'll find yourself even more satisfied by the images. Although there's quite a bit of messing to do, as you saw from the apps before. Now, these have been uh, daytime captures. Let's actually try and find a nighttime video, because we should also have that. Sadly, the result is underwhelming. Even though the stabilization is excellent when walking around, uh, this is a worm capture. Oh, it's uh, orange at times. The street lights are a bit too big for my taste. And there's a bluish tint happening toward the edges of the image. At least we're stuck with a nice stabilization, which is a constant no matter which camera you're using. Okay, we're finally done with all the camera aspects and we can talk about other things, like, for example, the connectivity. This phone delivers 5G and Wi-Fi 6, so you should be happy with the speeds that are delivered here. I should probably also mention that uh, it's Bluetooth 5.2 available, um, GPS dual band, NFC and USB-C 3.2 port at the bottom, which also outputs video. This is the dual nano SIM card tray and the calls were pretty loud and clear in my book. When it comes to the speed test, we have it here and uh, these are the results it was able to deliver. When it comes to Wi-Fi, 691 over 695 in download and upload respectively. When it comes to 5G, uh, 436 over 17.6 in download and upload respectively. I would say it's quite fine. As far as the software is concerned, you can tell that Sony is opting for a more stock-like experience. The leftmost window is dedicated to the news. I'm relying on swipes to access the recents and go back and home. As you can see, the way the thumbnails are displayed here is a bit bigger than usual. And there's also this option called multi-window switch. Basically, it's a collection of pairs of apps, pre-applied pairs of apps, which can split the screen in two and you can mix and match here as you please. This is one of the examples. Half of the screen YouTube, half of the screen Chrome. Okay, now also helping with multitasking is the side sense, which is triggered like this, and you can combine windows, a main and pop-up, or split the screen in two from here. You can choose mix and match, as I said before. One goes here, and uh, for example, as I said before, one goes here, and one goes here. So you can do two things at a time with a pop-up app and a main app. Aside from that, you can see here the notifications and the quick settings, looking stock, and here you can find all of useful options, connectivity, apps, notifications, display, appearance, wallpaper, privacy, digital well-being. For security's sake, we have the fingerprint scanner in the side button, which is a bit of a hit and miss at times, wouldn't recognize my fingerprint, and I was a bit annoyed by that. Here you can find the widgets, which are quite good looking, and I would say typical for Android 12. And I'm curious how long it will take for us to get Android 13. This is the Game Enhancer, with a bunch of features related to games, even performance ones, capture ones, frame rate, and more. Aside from that, we have pre-installed Netflix, we have Bravia Core, we have tools, we have uh, the typical Google applications, and I think that's about it, unless I missed anything. There's an interesting feature here. 
240 hertz uh, frame which uh, sneaks a black frame between the 120 hertz frames during gaming apparently that helps with the frame drops okay we are about done so far and i think it's time to go to the verdict for this handset okay so verdict time pros and cons on the pro side it's a very comfy phone to use, to hold and uh, put in your pocket. It's got IP certification. It's got a very bright screen, the brightest that Sony has offered in its recent history or all time. For sure, it has a powerful processor inside. Great acoustics, except for the volume. Solid battery life, good selfies. Um, great stabilization for the videos. Honest colors, if you're looking for honest colors in photos and vids. Detailed filming, fast connectivity, and also the Music Pro app if you're an aspiring musician. As well as the fact that we have things like um, audio jack here, and uh, there should also be a micro SD unless I'm mistaken. Now on the cons, uh, it's an unusual format. I'm not sure people are used to this long format nowadays, even though Sony has been doing it for a few years. The vibration system still annoys me, the one that vibrates in tone with the music. And I have to be honest with you, SightSense is useless. I never got around to using it properly. And I think people actually don't want to have a split screen view of anything, if you ask the masses. The charging is slow, you don't get a charger, you don't get a cable in the box. And the camera, frankly, has too many options if you really want to dig into it and go to the other crazy modes and the other, well, three apps in total. Uh, Full HD videos are a bit noisy. The selfie... Uh, photos aren't much overall the nighttime pictures disappointed me a bit and um, well i would say there's a bit of heat and throttling when you play intense games for too long those were the cons now when everything said and done this is a phone for people who know what they're doing they know exactly what they're getting into they know exactly what they're going to use those three apps for particularly cinema pro they're the aspiring vloggers, they're the people who are using phones to take shots of weddings or they can earn money with that, they're travelers and they know how to mess up with the settings to achieve better results than what I did with the camera. So in the end, this is supposed to be a phone for a person who has, not money, but time. A person who has enough time to tweak all the options to find the ideal profile for the color, calibration, saturation, clarity and everything else. For the phone so if you feel like you have enough time the phone's price has already dropped even more than the experience and it may be tempting but you should have a passion for photography to really pull out the dragon from this beast up until that happens it's still a solid multimedia device to be honest for music and videos and games but beware of the camera it would be a pity not to use it with its proper potential if you're not patient enough and you don't have enough time that's it from us. This has been the review of the Sony Xperia 5 Mark IV. It doesn't beat the heavy hitters of this year. It doesn't beat the Galaxy S22 Ultra and Vivo X80 Pro. And uh, I could even estimate that the Huawei Mate 50 Pro. But when handled carefully and when using the options, it may have a fighting chance. Goodbye.